Welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to another video build series. So this time I am going to be building the Hasegawa 124 scale Lancia Stratos rally car and it's going to be done in the Fiat Olio scheme. Uh, so this is a reasonably old kit from, from Hasegawa. It's, it's been re-released so many times in so many different schemes. I spotted this one, quite liked the, the yellow and blue scheme and uh, yeah, decided to build it eventually. So I bought it ages ago, sat in a stash, uh, picked it out a while back and, and decided it was time to build it. So uh, part one of the video, which is today, that's going to cover all the bodywork stuff. So getting it prepped, primed, painted, decaled, clear coated. Uh, so not the longest video in the world, cut it right down to... to get it we'll say relatively short and snappy uh, and get through all the key steps of getting that body to the clear coat stage uh, and then part two will probably do everything else because it is a curbside kit uh, so yeah so there we have it that is uh, today's plan so if you're new here don't forget to subscribe please like the video if you like the video if you know what I mean so give it a thumbs up if you think the video is good give it a like don't forget to do that uh, and feel free to leave a comment as well. Uh, if you don't like the video, put a thumbs down if you want. That, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, yeah, and don't feel free to leave a comment. But more importantly, please subscribe. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, I ain't got much more to say. We'll, we'll head on over to the bench and see how this build goes. So uh, stick your feet up, have a cup of coffee and... Uh, enjoy the build and I'll come back at the end for my final thoughts on this part so uh, see you in a few minutes so where do you even begin a build like this well you begin by opening the box and taking the parts out so for me the, the starting place is always going to be with the body work it's the the critical part of the kit uh, so I like to go through the instructions mark off any of the clear body colored parts uh, just so I know what needs to be painted. However, for this kit, I decided actually to take literally every part off the sprue that I needed, break everything down into sub-steps, uh, body, interior, running gear, front suspension, rear suspension, you name it. But however, the actual starting place is still the same, and that is with the bodywork. So first up, it's getting rid of any of the seam lines around the body. There is a couple. They're not particularly bad on this kit. Uh, a little bit of a clean up with some UMP sanders and those seam lines are absolutely sorted. Uh, so then it's a case of a little bit of rescribing, uh, just to add a little bit of clarity and depth to any of the key panel lines. Also clears out any of the debris from the sanding process. A little bit of test fitting just to make sure I know where everything needs to go. And then for these uh, arch extensions for the rear, they are actually going to be glued in place now because they'll just get painted with the overall body. So once I've test fitted them, it's a case of using a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, uh, which is actually mixed 50-50 with EMA Plasti Weld. Just makes it a little bit hotter. So once that's nicely cured, the body is mounted on the paint stand and given a wipe over with some UMP airbrush cleaner just to degrease the body, get rid of any uh, fingerprint marks, grease marks, and that lets it be prepped for the priming stage. So first up, it's UMP white primer. And lay down approximately three coats of UMP primer, also the UMP Apex airbrush at about 30 PSI. And that lays down absolutely fine. Once the primer stage is fully cured for about 24 hours, it's then a case of laying down some TS26, which has been decanted, and that is airbrushed through a harder and steam Beck Infinity at about 15 psi. So it's three coats of the TS26 then on top of that. Now don't forget TS paints do like to go down a little bit wetter. So once that is cured, 
it is time to start masking up any of the areas on the kit that are going to stay white. There's not a huge amount, but they do need to be masked up. Uh, so then it's a case of using the Zero Paints uh, Fiat Oleo set, which is yellow and blue. And the main color of the body shell of yellow is going down. And as you can see, we've got those masked areas, which will remain white. Now, the roof of the car will end up white. There is a decal for that. Uh, I have a little bit of concern at this stage that the white paint and the white decal won't quite be the same tone. Because yellow is a very strong colour and the, and it will bleed through the white decal. But because the shapes are quite complex, it seems my, my decision was to go with the decals. It was quite a complex, would have been a complex masking job. And I decided not to do it. Maybe in hindsight, uh, I should have decaled or should have masked it, but I didn't. So three to four coats of the yellow have gone down. And then there's a further masking step, which is basically masking anything that's going to remain yellow. Because the next colour to go down will be the Fiat Oleo Blue from the Zero Paint set. So there's plenty of masking, just to mask up any of the areas that I want to stay yellow. Now there is a mix of blue paint and blue decals. At this stage I am hoping that the blue paint is a close match. Uh, to the decals of the kit. It looks close, but you don't really know until it's, it's fully painted and fully completed. But as you can see, using a mixture of Tamiya uh, masking tapes, starting off uh, with the rear wing. So with zero paints, of course, you want light, plenty of coats. It's quite a hot paint. If you go too heavy, it will craze. So you build it up in light coats. But because the blue is quite dark, it'll go over the white and the yellow pretty well and shouldn't leave much of a tone difference between the white and the blue. Hence the, the rear spoiler wasn't painted yellow. As you can see, after three or four coats of the blue, that's a nice deep shade of blue. And as you can see, at the particularly at the rear, that has covered evenly over the yellow and white, which are left at the rear of the car. So I do think zero paints have, have improved compared to where they were a few years ago. I don't think their thinners is as hot. It's still pretty hot but not quite as hot as I think they used to have quite a reputation for. Uh, so I have used them quite a lot recently and been pretty, pretty pleased with them, with the results. So once that paint is cured a little bit, it's time to go back and remove all of that masking tape. And there's lots of tiny bits all over the place. As you can see, we end up with a mixture of white, yellow and blue. And that all looks pretty good. Now, because I've got white decals to go over the yellow, I've decided to give it a clear coat. So it's a lacquer clear coat from Zero Paints. And that's just to try and act as a barrier uh, to prevent bleed through from the yellow into the white decals. So hopefully this will give a little bit of an improvement. not intended to be a complete shiny coat but just enough of a clear coat to act as a barrier so once that's had a couple of days curing time it's time to go back in start the deckling process and as is normal we've got warm water deckle solutions plenty of tweezers brushes cotton buds all the usual things you'd expect from the deckling process so this first part is, of course, one of the white decals that sits over the rear lid of the car, the engine cover. And as is usual as well, I'm going to speed up the footage and stick on some background music while the decals are being applied.
the ones those decals have had a good 24 hours curing drying time it's time to just add uh dark wash so i'm using ammo makes dark wash into a couple of the key panel lines now the the dark wash can look quite stark against the white but because i've got the dark blue as well i wanted to stand out a little bit against the dark blue as well so i've gone with the dark wash in this instance so just running it around the kind of rear clamshell area also in around some of the doors as well so once that wash has had a couple of hours drying time it's time to go back in with some odorless mineral spirits and remove any excess then leave that aside to dry for about 24 hours and then it's time to move on to the clear coat so i've switched back to gravity spain 2k this time uh, which is three coats first coat being attack coat uh, basically i ran out of pro scale uh, on my previous builds and had plenty of gravity 2k left so switch back to that for this and a couple of other builds coming up soon so first coat all important tack coat just aiming to get what i like to call basically a shiny pebble dash finish uh not really a smooth gloss not a not even an orange peel gloss just enough of a shiny material down so that will act as a nice sticky coat for the subsequent full me full gloss coat for coat number two so as you can see there's just enough material going down to make it a little bit shiny but still looking quite uh, rough and pebble dashed so that's left aside for about 10 minutes and then i can come back for coat number two and coat number two will be the first gloss coat so once again just speeding up the footage just to show the complete process of laying down this full wet coat so you are aiming for a full wet coat no orange peel you can get away with a little bit because there is a third coat and this is the third coat coming up so this is the all important final gloss coat this is the what you see is what you'll get coat it'll pretty much cure as it looks it'll flatten a little bit not a huge amount so this is really what it's going to look like and as you can see i'm just checking over how it's come out and i'm really happy with that and that can be put aside to cure so let's head back to me for my final thoughts there we go that's uh part one done and dusted so i so as, as you can see that those white decals they're a little bit translucent they don't quite match the white painted bodywork uh it's it's one it's one of those kits that i kind of think you either really would have benefited from i guess all the white areas being deckled but then that would have been impractical for a few bits uh it was a it would have been very very tricky to just completely mask the white areas it was just, it was just an awkward decision so i decided to go with paint the bits that need to be painted and just use the decals that are there see how it goes uh i did you know as you saw i put down a clear coat after paint just to try and act as a little bit of a barrier just to try and help reduce the amount of bleed through it probably has helped nowhere near enough to be honest you you know you can clearly see uh there's a there's a slightly different tone on that white but I can live with that. I accept that it's the decision I made. I, I can live with that. Uh, the blue paint from from Zero Paints. It's a pretty close match to the decals. It's not perfect. It it is. I can spot the difference. Uh, but it but it's close enough to be to be acceptable for me. Uh, but yes, yeah, so because we're a reasonably complex scheme, the 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 shapes on the blue areas are, are quite complex. It would have been difficult to just mask and kind of paint all of it uh certainly to be reasonably accurate on those shapes but how's ever i've done what i've done i've clear coated it so it's it's set for eternity in in that clear coat uh so yeah so reasonably happy I, you know as as i as i kind of probably mentioned in the video uh this was this was a nice bit of a mojo builder for me there was probably a little bit of a dip, which I mentioned in the Celica. This one was a really straight out of the box, nice, relatively complex scheme. 
and just really, really be it has begun to kind of rebuild the mojo at this stage. So really enjoyed part one of this video. Uh, and let's see if I still enjoy them part two. Uh, but here's ever another key point to know to switch back to using gravity uh, after pro scale on the last few builds. And, and that's pure and simple. I ran out of pro scale. Uh, there is no... That it, I just ran out. I had loads of gravity from a previous order. I tried Pro Scale earlier in the year uh, when Paul released it uh, and used up the one set that I had. I hate waste, so I'm not going to waste the gravity, so that, that's going to get used up. And uh, at some point in the future, I'll, I'll probably switch back to Pro Scale because uh, that was very enjoyable and easy to use, being just two coats as opposed to the three. So that has actually got quite an influence over. The, the process for me uh, it just makes it quicker to do with, with just doing two coats but there we go i've waffled on for long enough so thank you all for watching if you're new here don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment and thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in part two which will hopefully be coming very very soon so thanks for watching bye for now bye bye